Um, that's the one with yeah. the red berries. Oh my God, that's uh, unbelievable. Uh, uh, do you have you? Pacha mama. Yeah, do you have uh, coca plants uh, in Florida? Yep. You do. What do they? Yep. What do they do with them? Uh, what the the indigenous people of, of or South America? Or anybody? Uh, so, are they native to Florida? Coca plants? No, they're from uh, South America, uh, Peru. Well, what do they do with uh, coca plants? Are they just uh, wild? They, or? Uh, well, they cultivate them for thousands of years uh, because they have this these alkaloids in there. One of them uh, is called ecgonine. Uh, and if you chew the coca leaf with a little bit of ash, they usually uh, burn sacropia leaves and make the ash and mix a little bit in the coca leaves and chew it. They, they're not hungry and they have incredible stamina because it's so humid and hot in the jungle, it's hard to do any work. You know, you got to dig a post hole or something like that. You chew coca and do your work, you know, build a roof or put a post in or something like that. You, you're not hungry, you're not thirsty, and you have a lot of stamina. Oh, wow. Well, that's that's a positive use. For that's it. very so positive. Yeah, so and the West came in there and oh, oh, you got this and what is this? And they synthesized the alkaloids out mm -hmm. of the leaves and they made cocaine with it and then they abused it. But the yeah, Indians coca, didn't have that. Yeah, Coca Cola used to have it. And Coca Cola course, put it in their drink for a little pick me up. Yeah, and at one time it was, uh, uh, you know, used somewhat like morphine. I mean, it was used as a as a pain reliever. Yeah, they made pain medicines and they put coca in it, the alkaloids in it. Yeah, well, that's a, it's a very interesting. Uh, it's dream. a very sacred plant to the indigenous people that had it thousands of years. Well, yeah, I mean, what I was reading about it is, is it is chewed mm -hmm. somewhat, you know, it's just a plant, it's a leaf that you chew mm -hmm. and it's very nutritious and, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I didn't know, I didn't see what you were saying. That's really good about it. I mean, the, oh, the aspect well, that you don't, you're not hungry right. and you're not thirsty. You know. I've chewed it before to dig up stumps. I had a stump to dig up instead of mm -hmm. spending months on it. You know, I can get it up in one week. <laughs> well, that's, it, it is, uh, it, you make me curious about it. You know, um, I don't know if you. I will wait till somebody comes in before we start it on it. Maybe if some, or we'll just start on it a second. But I was going to tell you. You know, uh, uh, we had a. Uh, um, you know, Jan Claire did her little thing on uh, on uh, it was called crack. Yeah, what you know, happened and, with that? Oh well, um, well she doesn't like. To be recorded, so we have to yeah, be I know, recording off. I know, so I could. But anyway, yeah, this off. crack uh, was the you know pretty much. He had a forked beard. She saw him when she was uh, three years old, wow. and she would see him. And then there was another uh, man that lived under the bed, and he he was covered with brown hair, and his hair would come up through the through the mattress. Well. Her parents, and and what what he really was was a uh, was a coat on a coat hanger, you know, and he uh, uh, they took the coat and the coat hanger and threw it in the ocean. Okay, so she didn't see him again for four years, but then he comes back. Wow, you know, and uh, so what what we were doing we were, you know, just discussing who the devil is, you know, what is the devil, you know, and uh, uh, I, th this is going to lead to a dream I just had, but anyway, the uh, devil, my theory is here, good, because this, this is a pretty interesting little uh, anecdote here, hey, Gary, how's it going, Gary? Good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, uh, we're going to start on a Roy dream. It was a tulpa, a tulpa. 
What's that? What, what Jan had is, oh, a, yes. is a tulpa, imaginary yes. friend, a tulpa. That's the yeah, name yeah. they call them, T U L P A. Well, tulpa. see, because you know, stayed with her. Yeah, I had one, and, and he lived in the electric socket. You know, <laughs> and I would go over there and talk with him, you know. But uh, I just want to tell you this quick story, then we'll uh, look at Roy's dream. But anyway, you know, we started talking about Gary, you know, who the devil was, you know. Uh, in, in Faust, um, Mephistopheles, who is the black dog, takes Faust back to ancient Greece to retrieve Helen of Troy, you know, so they have to go back in time. But Mephistopheles felt very uncomfortable there because there was no such thing as evil, mm. okay? In Greece, there wasn't. And you know, what the underground deities would be seen on Mount Olympus, they were called the Kabiri, you know, and they're actually the Telesphorus, you know, I heard somebody something interesting about the Telesphorus too. Is the um, this one guy says that today all of us, every one of us, is orphans, are orphans, and that we all live in a the whole world is an orphanage, and uh, that this sense of abandonment is in all of us, you know. There, there is this sense of abandonment. And I, you know, I was thinking of Camus says, you know, abandonment is the foretaste of death, you know. But no, yeah, it was Camus. But anyway, here's here's the thing about the uh, uh, the devil, you know. So I, I just was saying, well, who is the devil? You know, basically he is Pan, you know. He's this, um, he is is this uh, figure who is is the son of the great mother. He's half goat and half human. And somehow uh, the most spiritual religion of the Levant, you know, there's the, the most feeling function is the, uh, is Islam, you know, and the most spiritual and most removed from the body is uh, Christianity. And, you know, they, took the figure of Pan and uh, uh, thought, ooh, wait, thought he was, uh, um, he represented the aspect of the, uh, of the devil or the, uh, that aspect that Christianity wanted to separate itself from, from the body, from the, the feminine, from the mother. And it was all going to be the spiritual, uh, very masculine aspect. And uh, hi, hi, Tim. We're just talking about the devil a little bit because I had a little dream about him, uh, a, a little dream. But anyway, uh, so, so you know, Mephistopheles, when he was a spouse, uh, you know, was felt uncomfortable when he went back in time to Greece because there's no such thing as evil there. You know, evil only came about in when there was this very spiritual religion and what evil really was initially was the feminine and the mother and the being connected with the body. And, you know, St. Paul kept talking about how we need our body is this cancer that we need to, you know, evolve out of. Well, and, and then that lasted until about 1000 AD. Then it became um, this uh, uh, factor of... Uh, ego consciousness of the ego is the God, you know, and no longer is there. A, so this is the horizontal age of Pisces. Well, anyway, you know, I've been told by the uh, anima, and by the way, hi, Charles. I was told by the anima that if you don't work on your dreams, then I'm not going to even talk to you anymore, you know? And so, you know, I start out and, and I get this dream and it's really dumb. You know, I, I'm in a, a car with the shadow and I sneeze, okay? And uh, uh, turkey goes everywhere, everywhere. And I can't, I'm trying to clean it up. I feel really bad because it's not my car. And I keep, you know, trying to clean up, but there's no way I can't clean it up. So I'm wondering, how do I amplify this dream? You know, 
it's just, you know, I don't get it, you know? And so first I thought, well, uh, you know, I, I started thinking about the respiratory system, you know, and that something that came out of me uh, from the spirit is uh, annoys the shadow. And, you know, that's the way I was going. But then I, I threw an I Ching on it, you know, and it, it basically said that these, it, and actually what it was is, I get this one all the time. It's the three receptive lines, which mean earth, you know, all open, broken uh, lines. And then the second one was also earth. So it's earth over earth, you know. And then uh, what, what, what it then came to me, you know, was this, that uh, while in the vehicle of the psyche with the shadow, the spiritual element tries to expel the bodily from it, okay? You know, the respiratory air is trying to expel the bodily element from its, you know, really great concept, concepts. The ego uh, sees that um, it just makes a mess that cannot be cleaned up. So the body, uh, you, you know, the uh, irrational earth you know we're all our bodies are all our little earth you know every one of us have an earth and it's it is the body and it also i'm really convinced and i told my wife this too is when you talk about the higher power what you're talking about is the massive root underneath the ground out of which you came so my root is not the same as your root so what the higher power is, this is the our law. My law is not your law, but my root gives me my law. Okay, so that my, and you know, I'm a thinking function person and mission to be intuitive, think that I can expel the body by sneezing, but it just makes a big mess. The body is the primary thing. So uh, what I thought of too then was this was what Christianity tried to do. You know, they tried to sneeze the body out of themselves with spirit, you know, uh, with, with spirit, but they just make a big mess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's Maybe my Maybe you're little... talking turkey, man. You talk turkey, Craig. You I, talk I dream... turkey. Yeah, I dream about me all the time. You you're know, talking um, turkey. You're talk. You know, you're spewing yeah. substantial stuff out here. Yeah, you, you spew sp 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 substantial stuff. It's called talking turkey. Man, Craig's yeah. going to talk turkey. We're going to tune in, man, because he's going to be talking turkey. You know, that's what you <laughs> want to hear. Yeah. Well, well, that is one of my. I I think the way to. Uh, you, you know, and I've started doing this, and I think I, I got this really from Gary, is um, that before I do anything in active imagination, I always, um, and by the way, after I did this stream, you know, which I thought was a horrible, uh, most ordinary blah dream, but after I got done with it, I, I did my active imagination. All kinds of, of things were showing up. You know, I mean, in other words, what before was just black. You know, if I see just blackness, I pray, you know. But but today, I, I just saw all kinds of stuff, you know. Hey, Shu. So, huh? Go ahead, Tim. Yeah. Finish your sentence. You said before you do an act of imagination, you what? Um, uh, I do. Uh, I'm supposed to work an hour on dreams, you know. And if I don't. The anima told me, I'm not wasting my time on you, you, you know, and, uh, and, and it was, and, and I never did get the meaning of that dream until I threw a Ni Ching on it. And what I got was earth over earth. And I get that one a lot of times. And it had like two changing lines. And it said that two dragons are fighting, uh, but it's an equal match and neither one would win and there's black and yellow blood on the ground, you know. But, but what it also uh, uh, 
said to me, I mean, I can't remember what it said, but it actually told me what the dream was. But anyway, it reminded me of the devil conversation. You know, that Christianity tried to expel the body from it, just like I try to do it. You know, and, and I don't do it on purpose. I just do it unconsciously because I value conceptual things and spirit more i mean whether i whether i admit it or not i do i probably value the abstract more than the imminent you know? and i would say the whole of western culture denies the body and we've yes. been on this we've been on this kick ever since a uh, linear perspective was introduced to the west in 1425 yeah. which is young. the you know, the idea of linear perspective, what it does is it produces the screen and it puts a viewer on one side of the screen and the world on the other side of the screen. And ever since then, ever since 1425, we've been removing ourselves farther and farther and farther from our body. And now we're just on these devices all the time and you don't need a body anymore. No, and, and I think this is coming up in all of her dreams. I don't mean to say this, but but uh, Charles, you know, and I don't know. Uh, now, Roy, we're going to do a Roy dream here uh, real quick. Uh, but um, I don't know about Roy. I can't tell you the Roy story because uh, it's, it's very, um, uh, you know, there's something about Roy's dreams that is so deep, I can't, uh, you know, really, I, mean, I I think it is so deep that I can't really get it. Hi, Shu. Charles, how are you doing? Uh, hi, I'm good. Okay, great. I was just telling a little anecdote about a, the, a, the dream I had, which sort of reminded me of, we were just talking about what the devil was, and, you know, I did... Uh, Color. You know, I, I just feel if I don't do this, I'm going to get in big trouble. You know, here was my little dream about the uh, anima who dies, and the only one who can save her is not the regular doctors, but the uh, but the uh, doctors who dress like you know, with animal costumes. You know, but anyway, um, I think. Every, did we finish every, up everybody's dream and we can start on Roy's? I, I don't remember. I'm kind of, and now Shu or Charles if, or Tim, if you have a dream, uh, get ready. And uh, uh, I, I'm, how about you, Gary? Are you dreaming at all? I think I'm remembering. Yeah, well, you, you know, one thing I do is I, I uh, try not to eat, ca drink caffeine after like uh, noon and, uh, and then I take uh, melatonin and, uh, uh, and B6 at night. But, you know, also try to, if I read a fairy tale, it works very well. But anyway, why don't we do Roy's dream real quick? Uh, and, and I don't know, uh, you know, just the quality of Roy's dreams are very mysterious. I mean, they just have a, a, a mystery about them that I, I can't really completely fathom, you know, but uh, anyway, uh, Roy, do you want to read your dream? Okay. Yeah. I just want to make a, one more remark. And of course it relates to my dream. Uh, you know, this uh, Dionysian Christian thing, uh, it was sort of precursor to the 17th century and, and Newton and Descartes and uh, the, Numbers, Jung says that numbers are archetypal, but really numbers are archetypal of order. And the uh, scientific age is obsessed with order. And anything subjective or messy, it throws out. And so we've lived for centuries now with this ordering uh, paradigm, just infiltrating everything. And, and, and uh, I guess, everything messy and subjective is just sunk into the unconscious. And, you know, I, I feel like that's where we're at. And uh, this train doesn't have a fire in it anymore, but it has such incredible inertia 
you just have to get the hell out of the way. But, but eventually things are going to change because of all this buildup in the unconscious. Well, it, you know, we are at a significant turning point, as Emma Young was saying. And the other thing is, I, I did I say Young called us all decapitated heads? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you know, just, you, you know, Von Franz said one time, oh, great, Dawn's here. Yeah. I mean, uh, Von Franz said one time uh, that, hey, Dawn, how's it going? Uh, von Franz said that, you know, Young said in chaos, there's a secret order. She said, I can give you any random uh, set of dots on a page, just like the stars that we see the constellations on. And she says, you will find order there. You will see patterns. And she says they can be completely random. But, you know, we, there, we find structure or order somehow you know even in these random uh things and and this is what uh marion woodman says and then we'll go into roy's dream she says that that dreams take the events of the uh the every day bring them in a narrative and they let the eternal shine through them you know they bring them in and then present them in a way that the eternal shines through them, you know, and this is what you, only this, nothing else unites body and spirit or body and meaning or nature and meaning. The only thing that unites it is these, it, it takes the everyday, lets the eternal shine through. And then like, uh, like uh, Marie-Louise von Franz says, we do when we look at a bunch of of dots randomly made, we find the meaning there or the pattern or whatever. I mean, for instance, I just want to mention, I said last time that if, if we told, if we had 20 people in a, in a uh, circle and each one recited Tim's dream, Tim's dreams in the order that we've, we've heard them, there's a, it, they're all one piece, you know, they really are. And it's uh, really thrilling, I think. It's great to see you, Dawn. And, um, you know, Dawn, I, when I was talking about anima streams, I wish I had some of yours that I could have um, read during our uh, little discussion on the anima. And anyway, uh, Shu, um, Shu, Charles, or Tim, or Dawn, if you have a dream, uh, go ahead. I'm going to put this one in the, uh, we're going to do this one by Roy real quick. And we'll... It, you know, we got about, uh, let's see, about an hour and 15 minutes left. And we'll, we'll try to split it up evenly. And then if we don't, um, it, Charles, did you have a dream? Oh, okay. Well, that's fine, Dawn. But if you do have a dream, I would, I, you know, Dawn's had a dream where a voice said, I'm not sending you any more animus dreams. And yet every one of her dreams up until now has been an animus dream. So that's an interesting thing to say. Her, Don, your, your dreams tend to make these pronouncements. You know, I don't sure how, um, how valid that one is. I think it's, it's sort of a message rather than to the ego that it needs to pay attention or it's going to lose uh, its connection with soul. Or something like that. Well, Roy, did you want to? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay, Charles. Well, you can. Uh, let's do Roy's dream, and then Charles says he has a dream, and then Tim, if you do have one, or Shu, uh, if Shu, do you have a dream? I don't, don't have a dream. No, I'm just listening in today. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, not perfect, but okay. Well, uh, whatever. I meant whatever. <laughs> well, we'll we'll cope with whatever we got. Okay. Um, anyway, Charles, so Charles and Tim, if you can get one ready. Right. Uh, would you uh, read your dream? Hey, Roger. Okay. I had this uh, last Saturday. I was at the Fruit and Spice Park. I was by a shade house. Nearby was a neglected plant falling over in some trees. It was a coca plant, but it was not a bush, but a tree. I decided to prop it up so it so it could be back in the sunlight. 
I put a rope around the trunk, which I could use to hoist it up. I needed something to tie the rope to. My mom's old Cadillac was nearby, which was rusting and not fixable. I ho hoisted the tree up and anchored it to the car. It swung it up over the shade house. I thought, oh, wow, now Louise, the director, will see it. She will have to prove this or it won't work. Okay, well, let's let's go at it and uh, see what we can make of it. It's like, like the dream I had about the sneezing. At first, I thought, this is just a dumb dream. But it turned out to be... I, I, I don't know if you if you do this, Craig, or not, but sometimes I'm not even going to write a dream down sometime, and I'll tell my wife, and and she'll, oh, yeah, that's this is what this is. And, and I said, my God, you know, I don't know how she does it, but you know how somebody else can really give you some good ideas on your dream, especially your wife, and you just say, oh, this is nothing. Well, I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to, I really feel that I have to do every dream and, you know, take it seriously, see where the eternal is shining through. But anyway, uh, so now we're at the fruit and spice park. So this is the place where you are, are you currently working there or? No, I'm a just, volunteer. I volunteer, a volunteer once a week. Yeah, and and the fruit and spice park is a uh, a place where very rare uh, mm -hmm. plants are, um, you know, tended, That's and it right. also has uh, some uh, places for people to um, to eat or something or like. Uh, yeah. no! If the fruit's on the ground, you can eat it. You're not supposed to pick stuff off the trees. Okay, if it's fallen fruit. Yeah. But anyway, it's a, it's just a, a place, um, and there's a lot of these in Florida because we went to another one in Florida. Where Birch they, Isle's the most famous one here that we have. Yeah. They they um, get they they collect very rare species of plants, mm -hmm. and uh, so. It is a place of the diversity of the rooted world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, and like uh, the shoe build stork, it's, it are plants of, 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 that are very, um, you know, something that is very uh, a special or almost uh, has a, a shamanic master plant quality to it. You know, I, I want to show you real quick this uh, little picture uh, I had uh, taken this morning. Uh, let's see if I can put this in here. Uh, this. Uh, and Roy, what beauty. is the shade house? Yeah, there you go. Well, uh, that's down here in Florida. You, you get so much sun that you get a screen and you put it over uh, uh, area. So you, you young plants will be in the shade house so they, so they don't get the intensity of that sun. They have different fabric, you know, uh, oh, you know yeah. 30% shade, 40% shade, whatever you want. Oh, I see. Okay. So the shade house, if you, you know, you see, this is just the moth. It's about five inches. That's beautiful. Wingspan. Mm -hmm. And it was on our garage floor this morning. You know, wow. Just like, wow. It's just unbelievable. But anyway, the the shade house yeah uh, let's let's go over that the shade house is is it something to to for plants that need shade yeah we have a we have a nursery and we we have a hot house and a shade house for where we're growing plants they're young they're not ready to harden out the environment yet with the rain and the full sun so yeah it means now is the is the coca plant in a shade house well, we don't have a coca plant because technically they're illegal in the United States. Mm -hmm. But in the dream, there's a coca plant. I mean, was yeah, well, it in... that, they can't arrest you for dreaming of a coca. Plant. No, but it's in the sh it's in the shade house. Though. No, it's out oh. along uh, a wooded area that's bordering the shade oh, house. Oh, you the shade house. And it's not a bush; it's actually a tree, and it's falling it's fallen over so that mm -hmm. that it it can't get to the sun, you know, it's just not going to do well down there on the forest floor, shaded out. And, and we were talking about the coca plant uh, before uh, Roy and I were, and it, for the indigenous peoples, it was not um, uh, this cocaine aspect, mm -hmm. really. It was more, if you chew the leaves, 
you're never hungry, you can work all day, and you're never thirsty. And Roy actually would uh, chew it uh, for that reason too. I mean, he could bring bring a stump up, you know. But anyway, uh, this um, coca plant, which it tends to be, you know, it, it, you know Roy. It's you, controversial, you know, it's just controversial. It's controversial, but it also is a plant of, of changing or of altering the conscious attitude. It's like Dionysus. Yes, you know, it is a very It's going to be marginalized Dionysian. so fast you won't believe it. You know, yeah, we can't I mean, have this a, thing exist in our community. Yeah, and this is what, um, you know, the uh, Javaro Indians do and the peyote plant people do. Mm, same thing. Yeah, they, they do it to have a transformation of the conscious attitude. In other words, to get a revelation. Now, uh, you, you know, uh, I was just thinking, too, uh, I heard it. Somebody had a dream about a transformer. You have dreams about transformers. And they said, well, that, of course, that means it's a it's a, it's a device of transformation. You know? But anyway, you uh, I just thought about Roy when I heard that. But the um, the so this is a plant of, uh, of um, it, one that connects uh, the the t conscious attitude uh, in in time and space with the eternal realms, you know, uh, or at least opens it up, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if you read some of the uh, visions of people who are on LSD, uh, and uh, I mean, it's God is there. I mean, really, if, if they do it correctly. Uh, there's visions of the divine world, really is. You know, and Young, Young said when he read one of them that he would, he would hesitate to go to the place where um, colors come from, you know. But this, this is um, the, uh, a plant that connects our time and space um, mentality with uh, the divine, invisible world. It's one that's sort of the middle uh, link. So to some extent, it's the anima. You know? Well, it's Pachamama. It's one yeah. it's the Pachamama plant in, in Peru and Pachamama's uh, their work for Mother Earth. Yes, you know, it is the it it, it it you you know there's an absence sometimes of the anima in Charles dreams and in uh, until lately. And uh Roy, a lot of times, they're, they're, a lot of your dreams are very elemental, but I think this link to to the our time and space world and uh, and the self is um, the bridge is the coca plant, it's the anima, okay? Mm -hmm. So or it is this elemental anima, and now we see that it was um, not a bush but a tree. And it's been neglected, and it's fallen. Over. This is <laughs> this is. We all have these dreams. I mean, you know, uh, the emaciated dog comes up from the basement. You haven't seen. It, you know, it went missing twenty years ago, and we open up the basement. There it is. Just hasn't eaten for twenty years. So uh, there's an aspect that ego is neglecting this. Um, Plant like anima. Well, my dream ego is not neglecting it. No, the dream ego is not neglecting it. But they are saying that the, the ego outside. See, you do this a lot, Roy. In the dream, you are the one who solves the puzzle. But it, it, you, it the, the dream is saying there is. The puzzle is is out in your life right now, and here's uh, the dream ego seems to have this heroic quality, and it is propping up the uh, this bridge, uh, it, the neglected bridge within ourselves. You know, now you can uh, it may maybe something else uh, will uh, be another interpretation, but anyway, uh, the dream ego is trying to get this bridge to be more effective and actually uh, do what needs to be done with it. And um, 
So uh, we're, we're hoisting it up with your mother's old Cadillac. So it's old, old rusted tractors near the, in the shade house. I mean, there's a couple of rusted old tractors, but not in my dream. It's yes. my mom's old Cadillac. Yeah. So the great mother, or you know, this 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 sort of eternal mother figure, is is uh, is going to help us uh, uh, have a better have a proper relationship with the feminine uh, through through her help her you know pulling help her ability to uh, help uh, her she is able to help write the anima so that we have a better relationship with it or her vehicle and um so she we we are um it's nearby which was rusting and not fixable you hoisted the tree up and anchored it to the car it swung up over the shade house now can you can you illustrate that a little better? Well, when when uh, you're propping a tree up, one side's weak, that's the side it's fell down on, mm -hmm. right? So when you prop it up, you pull it up against the strong side. It's, the roots are still in good. And, it, and then you got a, opposing forces. Of course, then you have to tie it off. You know, you, you got to have an opposing force force on each side so it'll stand up right we we use a little wind well after this deal with the with the you probably duration. went some trees up right well just a, an inch a day okay and, we, we, and and then then we see if there's any give in it and we inch right. it up a little bit more you know every day trying to write some of these big bigger right you no know. but anyway um that is that what you're doing or you're not actually pulling it with cadillac no, uh, the Cadillac doesn't run. It's not yeah. fixable. And uh, it was just happened to be in the exact right place where All I right. needed to tie the rope off to keep the tension between the tree and, and where the roots are in the ground. And, and so so the, balanced. the yes, the 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 gravitas or the weight of the mother realm is the anchor with which we're going to pull. An this, anchor. this bridge um, to uh, to conscious attitude and the self, we're going to uh, get the proper proper relationship in the dream by using the mother as the anchor, you know, uh, uh, the feminine. So it's it's sort of the the great mother and the transformational anima, uh, and um, but we swing it up over the shade house, but now. We think that another feminine figure is going to not approve uh, of this, or it won't work. An authority you know. figure. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a start on it. Um, we'll see how far we get tonight on it. What do you think, Gary? Yeah. So, Roy, what was your relationship with your mother? I mean, was it was it good, or I mean, how how was that? Uh. Well. Uh. I my my uh, I'm way back where where was where where all uh, like trophy wives and debutantes, and so uh, my my mom had to support my father, you know, buffer him up. That's that's what these type of women did way back then, and uh, so I I feel a little neglected, but that's all right, you know, you know that's the way it was back then, and. Uh, but she's coming and supporting me now. She's getting behind me now because, because uh, things have changed. Is she still alive? No, she she oh. died uh, in 2017. She was about 96. No, she was 99. 99. And any any special feelings about the cocoa plant? Oh yeah, that that's Pachamama. It's nothing more sacred than that. You know, it's Pachamama. And it also represents a symbolic of controversy. And I'm always in the middle of controversy my whole life. I mean, I breathe controversy. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. So I don't know. You know, I, I think Craig is, you know, that's pretty much it because it's pulling, you know, it's pulling this this sacred thing up out of the, you know, out of the shadow. It's on the forest floor. 
you know, into consciousness. And yet, even, even if its foundation isn't perfect, you know, it needs something to anchor itself to. So even though what it's anchoring it to is not fixable, it's sufficient. But then, you know, the sort of the strange thing is it's like it's up, but the manner in which it's up may not be totally acceptable because you wonder, you know, what Louise, the director, you know, how will she feel about it? You know, and, and how is Louise to work with? Well, uh, it's interesting. Here's some synchronicity. Uh, about a week before this dream, I'm over there volunteering and somebody brings out a plant and they say, this is Banisteria copy. I said, whoa, you know, that's an ayahuasca plant. I don't know who put it in there. And uh, we were we were trimming it up, repotting it and stuff. And we were talking about it. And uh, and and Louise says, is that legal? We can't have that, it's, it's illegal. And I said, no, it's not illegal. You can have these in the United States. She said, no problem, you know, so, so it's fine. And then after I had the dream, they have a, a farmer's market at the park on Saturday. Uh, the day uh, after the dream that I had early Saturday morning, I go over there and pay $10 to go to this thing. And uh, there was an ethnobotanical guy there. He was a millennial, him and his wife, his name was John, her name was Georgia. And he was, a, he was into ethnobotanicals. Uh, he had ayahuasca plants there and a lot of other really interesting plants. I never seen an ethnobotanical guy at the farmer's market before. I've been here 10 years. So that was weird. Wow, that is kind of a synchronicity. So, you know, so the director see, will see it. And, and so, you know, the, the hoisting up is, and the manner in which it's done, you know, you're still trying to figure out if this is going to work long term. Mm -hmm. Is what that sounds like. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, that's I really don't have much. That's it. Well, it, yeah, just to sum up what he, some good things Gary said is, is uh, um, that it, let, let's just say this happened in the outer world. In in the outer world, we found a way. To, uh, to, to write the, the, uh, the, the um, aspect that connects ego consciousness with the divine world using um, the maternal as the anchor and, and bringing up this uh, feminine plant, which right now is not operative because it's neglected and fallen over. So the, the dream ego is, is showing, what if this happened really in the outer world, that we were able to do this in reality? I mean, that's, uh, I, I think that was really, uh, that's what I was gathering from what Gary was saying. What, what do you think, Tim? Well, Roy, I'm thinking about the difference between the, what the young plants need, which is this filtered sunlight and, and what the coca plant needs, which is direct, direct sunlight. And so by, by putting the coca plant up, it's providing more shade for the shade house, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about the young plants as being the, um, some kind of fresh ideas or, uh, uh, something bubbling up from the earth that that needs to be protected from the, from consciousness, and by by exposing this uh, the Pachumama, uh, it helps that situation somehow. Yeah, they they need nurturing. And the Pachumama can surround them and nurture them. And yeah, them. they're fragile growing things. Yeah, so somehow those two are connected. Mm -hmm. And the ethnobotanists come, I mean, they, 
they basically aren't they people who try to uh, to uh, I mean I'm just thinking that they try to uh, restore uh, the original uh, uh, condition that the plant was in or what what well, is what? no botanicals they they travel the world uh, going to these uh, indigenous cultures seeing uh, what plants they use for medicinal purposes and things in their culture. That's really what ethnobotanical is. Okay. Yeah, and you, you know, I, this was about Michael Harner, the shaman says, do you know how, how these uh, indigenous peoples discovered these uh, healing herbs? And everybody says, no. And he says, it talked to me. That's true. It's very it's true. That's what they say. Sometimes they'll go, like the shaman will go uh, isolate with one plant a couple of weeks. He won't eat anything. He'll just drink water and maybe nibble on the plant and, and just sort of be with the plant for a week or so. And, and you know, Michael Harner had a course uh, on talking to uh, trees and to uh, flowers and to plants. And, you know, I mean, basically it's doing an act of imagination with him, but you know, my wife was talking about uh, plants that heal that are in the shape of the organ that you want to heal. And I, I asked her, uh, well, what about uh, mandrake? And she says, what's mandrake? You know, and I just uh, pulled up a picture of a mandrake. Let me see if I could show it to you. But um, Shu, do you, uh, what do you think? I'm going to show you this picture uh, of the mandrake. Um, yeah, I am. Um... I find it interesting that the um, idea of seeking approval as well from um, oh, cool. <laughs> Mandrake. Yeah, well, I'm just showing you the Mandrake group. Yeah, but go ahead. Seeking the sense of approval. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, that seeking the sense of approval for that plant. And it seems to me that um, there is some kind of fear or something maybe to do with the anima or like some something that you're trying to work with and trying to restore and trying to redesign or tend to except there's a fear there or you know you need to be um handheld a little bit around the whole thing there's a nervousness around it um and i'm wondering whether perhaps maybe it is the medicine that's calling you like this particular herb that's calling you to connect to it, whether you do physically in an excellent botanical sense or whether it's through just sitting with the plant and meditating on it as a way to connect with the yeah, feminine aspects. Um, it really reminds me of one of the first dreams I heard from you, Roy, about the, the building, you know, um, you were building a house or, you know, your house had Falling down or something like that, you know, with the pine trees. Um, and I remember saying the same thing at the time that, that there was some kind of structural reconfiguration going on. Um, that seemed like more of an animus thing, you know, like being the structure of a building, whereas this is the anima where it's the structure of the tree that's now being rebuilt and reconfigured in some way. But yet there seems to be some kind of fear connected to it or a need to seek approval. Um, even, even the fact that you mentioned that this was a um, topic of controversy um, is another, like, you know, to me, I thought, oh, that's interesting that you, you think that this plant is a topic of controversy. You know, I, I know that there's lots of cacao ceremonies that happen um, and... Um, it can happen um, legally in that sense as well. Um, but yeah, they're just some of my thoughts around this thing. Yeah, well, well let me just mention, hey, let's hear what Reyes say, but that's a wonderful analogy. In what was happening in the pine forest, unbeknownst to Roy, there was a house being built for him. And yet what, what the dream ego was, was worried about in this great grove of pine trees that one would fall and crush his house. So now in this case, 
um, the uh, dream ego is building the house by bringing the coca tree up and this authority figure uh, who is uh, Louise and a tree is feminine, a big tree is feminine. There's an aspect of that she is, could be one of these trees that fall and crushes this um, aspect of that we are forming. It, it, what is the meaning of the house in the forest being built for us? And what is the meaning of having a proper relationship with this sacred plant? And, and I had one question too, Roy. And what is the relationship of this sacred plant that's being righted with the shoe-billed stork? I mean, they are both these characters of uh, uh, godlike characters. But in this case, we are, um, we are restoring the proper relationship in, uh, our, our, uh, in our soul lives of anima and ego and the self. And we are, you, we are doing it through our efforts. Um, we are, um, uh, doing we this is what we're doing in our with our dream work through our efforts in in uh, working with with the unconscious we are writing uh, getting a, a better relationship with this um, transformational tree the one that is the bridge to uh, the eternal world you know, Roy, do you have any thoughts about that or not right now? Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm trying to build a foundation so I don't get smashed by authority figures in and, and, and the materialistic world and, and you know, stuff that's, that's dominating everything. And, and, and these things are, are very fragile. And, and who's going to bring them forth? Who are the ones that are going to support these things and, and bring them back into the world. That's, that's not an easy job, you know, and, and I'm one of them. And, and even though- and the fact that, um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I, was just, I was just about to add that um, the fact that you had the Shade House Association with the tree too, so you're, you're wanting to protect and nurture it, but in some kind of a uh, underground way, like you're trying to put shade or darkness over it, not to be too obvious about it. At well, the a shade time. house is controversial. What is a shade? It's a ghost. It's the mm -hmm. dead. You know, what's more controversial than that? The whole thing is thonic and controversy. Who's going to support that? Who's going to who's going to give that life and bring it back in the world? Who, who's behind me? Who's going to help me do that? Mm. Well, how about the rusting uh, no longer working psychic vehicle of the mother who's been gone now. That's and my anchor. That's my yes, anchor. Even though she's gone, she's rusting. She doesn't work anymore. She is a fixed point. And from this fixed point, we can heal everything in our and it's, it's not just a vehicle. It's a Cadillac. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what she always drove. She always drove a Cadillac. Well, and, and the Cadillac is a royal vehicle. I mean, it's a, mm -hmm. there's an idea of it that it, it is absolutely royal. I mean, even the, the uh, um, emblem on the Cadillac almost looks like a royal insignia. Well, they don't mean much now, but in, in the like 60s and 70s and 80s, you know, they had, they had a lot of class. Well, with the, with the, uh, you know, really, you had uh, a Cadillac, which was always the one that was used by uh, heads of state or a Rolls Royce, you know, or maybe a Lincoln. But those were the three vehicles that were used by the heads of states, you know. So, uh, but that is absolutely an immovable point. It's a fixed point from which we can use that as a lever to correct things uh, 
that that have have gotten out of kilter, you know, through through her help, that's how we can um, get the proper relationship with the transformative anima. Elemental here in the role of this uh, coca plant, but still um, is a bridge. Uh, the anima is the bridge. Charles, do you have any uh, comments about it? And by the way, how are you doing? I'm okay. Um, I'm actually headed home. Um, but I'm still thinking about Roy's dream, um, trying to imagine it. Um, but yeah, it definitely seems like a... Um, something's being repaired and brought up into consciousness mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, an area where new things are blooming. Um, I probably, I, I personally have a different um, association to a coca plant than, you know, um, um, what was it? Uh, con controversy um, makes me think of like a mercurial kind of quickening kind of, um, um, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but yeah, I'm still kind of trying to mold the dream over in my imagination. Do you see the, the, the mystery that's coming up? <laughs> it's a very, it's a dream full of mystery. You know, I mean, we, we're coming, the, the, here, let's, let's try to identify the aspects that are, and then uh, we, we, we will think about it and see if we have anything more to say about Wednesday. But let's kind of sum it up so we can start on uh, Tim and and get and Charles dream, and and like I say, Shu and Dawn, I would just absolutely just be delighted if you can bring a dream maybe uh, uh, soon because uh, I really uh, both of you guys have fabulous dreams, and you know I was also thinking Shu about the um, uh, about the restorative farmers. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, the restorative farmers and what um, Roy is doing, too, you know, mm -hmm. and what they were trying to do was to, we misinterpreted it. But what they were trying to do was to awaken the mm -hmm. dead instinct in us, you know, that instinct in us that it was was like Roy's um, neglected um plant that has fallen over so there's the, there is a relationship there between putting the deer on the the engine and and uh, applying uh some kind of like almost uh uh what fib defibrillator to it. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and roy uh trying to write the plant well let's just go over it real quick to see if anybody's got any see now we're first at this place of of magical plants okay and we're by a shade house so so we're out uh we're in feminine light basically indirect light you know there's a light that is is if we're standing in the sun we're in the masculine light but when we're standing in the indirect light uh we are in in that that uh feminine realm where things are uh you, you know a little darker a little more obscure and a little more irrational, not so clear, you know, just darker. And it's the shade house. So that also says to me, it is a, is a house of the lunar light. You know, it's a house of the lunar light. And then um, there is a neglected fallen plant. And the dream ego knows that it must, um, uh, 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 must come to the aid of this, which is our inner feminine, our soul, and the and the uh, dream ego knows it must come to aid of its own soul, and it, it what it's going to do is with the help of this fixed point of the maternal, it is going to uh, restore proper rela relationship with the soul, and then. Uh, and and she, and the mother's vehicle is this kind of a royal vehicle. So she's, she's like the queen goddess. 
is an aspect that she must be a goddess, you know, because of the royal aspect. And um, then, uh, so we are starting to try to get the proper relationship. We're worried about what the authority figures are going to do. I mean, there's, a, there's this, just like in the dream about the tree possibly falling and, and destroying the, the new house, there's an aspect of there is a danger here. Now, this, this authority figure or these large trees are, might be able to, um, to uh, uh, sh cut short the um, activity of restoring the soul to its proper place. You know, uh, does Roy or does anybody else have any more comments? Well, think about this one too and, and try to uh, see what we think on Wednesday, see if anything else comes up. Roy, do you have any closing thoughts on it? No, I think I understand this one. Yeah, okay. A anybody else uh, have any closing thoughts? Okay. Well, uh, why don't we uh, try to split the rest of the time up between uh, Tim and Charles. Uh, who, who wants to go first? Uh, Charles, you go ahead. Yeah, okay. All right, so we got about 36 minutes. Let's try to spend 18 minutes on uh, this one, and if we don't get through, we'll um, we'll finish it up on Wednesday. But go ahead, Charles. Okay, one second. Um, I'm trying to find this particular dream. Um, I could almost tell it to you from memory if I can't find it. Um, oh crap. Hold on one second. Sorry, I thought I knew where no, it was. Take your time. Take your time. Um, hmm, that's weird. It's almost like the spot that I, or it's like the page that I thought it was on. It's not there all of a sudden. Um, all right, well. I'll tell it from memory. Okay. Um, I was uh, at school and I was a child and there was a concert going on outside the school uh, in kind of like a grass field. I guess where all the kids would play. And there's a heavy metal band performing and the a uh, vocalist is a female and um, there is a part in a song where uh, like people from the audience would get a chance to sing along and they would point the microphones uh, at members of the audience and I wanted to sing along with them and they uh, looked right at me and I made eye contact with them and they pointed the microphones at me, but I was too uh, shy. And so they picked someone else. And then the next thing I know, I try to move forward and I tumble over a kind of like wooden railing that just appeared right in front of me. And so I tumble over it and fall head first into the grass and pick myself up and look around and the concert had just suddenly ended. And now everyone was um, making their way to the buses to go home. And, oh man, this is a detail I wish. Okay, so I think it was, uh, I looked at the time and it was 109. I think it was 109. Um, I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, that's the time I have to catch my bus. And um, I run over there and I am wondering if I can actually just go home with my friend. Um, but I don't know if his parents will let me. And one of the faculty members is there. And she says, oh, is he cheating on you? And I'm 
quite kind of confused and annoyed by this. And I say, well, no, it's not like that. He's my friend. And she just keeps repeating that over and over again. And yeah, I, it's quite irritating. And then that's the end of the dream. Okay, great. Well, um, this reminds me too, Tim, I don't really think we finished properly your dream about the concert. You know, uh, we'll, we'll get your dream now and then I want to review that concert dream because I don't remember that we did a very good job. All right. Yeah, but we'll, uh, we'll try to do both those dreams. Uh, we'll do this one today and then the next one because I don't remember that we did a very good job on that. So anyway, we are, um, we are at school and uh, so we, we went back to the place of, of uh, the departure point of learning. There is a concert going on in a grass field. Now, Charles, correct me if I got anything wrong. Okay. Um, and there is a hevel, heavy metal band playing. So that's, um, you know, I don't know. I'm not too uh, up to date on heavy metal bands. And there is a vocalist who's a female. And there is a chance to sing along with this. Um, did you know the songs, Charles? Or the um, words to the song. in the dream I did apparently. Yeah. Okay, so they were fairly well known songs. Yeah. But anyway, the dream ego wants to sing along. Everybody uh, the, the in the dream recognizes that the dream ego wants to wants to be in harmony with this uh, musical. Uh, world okay this world of, of of the lyrical and of the of, of really the this musical aspect and and the dream invites the, the dream ego yes come and harmonize with us you know the the figures of the inner world the the figures of the musical lyrical world yes come and harmonize with us and uh um uh we are are too shy and so they pick someone else okay am i okay so far charles yes yeah okay so then uh after we decline this um opportunity to be in harmony uh with this um the magic of the lyrical world you know which really is the magic of the psyche this aspect of uh, this is what Ma Ma uh, uh, Marion Woodman says about Sophia. She's everywhere. Everything you see is Sophia manifest. Every smile you see, every bright eyes, every beautiful flower is is the is the manifest presence of Sophia. Okay, so. You, you know, now in this case, instead of a flower, it's this musical realm. And we have an invitation to be in harmony with it. We say, mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do it. Okay. And they move on. Now, th this is a real lost opportunity. What do you think, Charles? Do you think that's a lost opportunity? Yeah, no, it absolutely is. Yeah. I mean, it was an opportunity for us. If, if we were in harmony with this musical realm, uh, it it would change us, and it we would we would have there would be an aspect of development. Let's put it that way. That and we turned it down. Okay, so now we move forward, and uh, this elfin, uh, you know, you know, it kind of reminds me of. Uh, when Parsifal uh, doesn't ask the question, he wakes up the next morning. There's no one in the castle, Grail Castle. Everyone is gone. All his clothes and armor are laid out for him. He puts it on. His horse is all saddled up and ready, but there's still no people. He gets up on his horse. He rides out the uh, entrance and uh right and he goes across the drawbridge that goes across the moat 
and right as he's ready to uh, hit it, they pull it up and trip his horse and say, be gone, you goose, you foolish person, you know. And uh, anyway, so there's this aspect that now we're tripped up. We fall um, because a wooden railing that we didn't see um, uh, trips us up. Okay. And uh, so it's just an aspect of that. Uh, uh, we tripped ourselves up, you know. And now we look at the time. Uh, and now, uh, am I missing uh, anything in that transition? Um, no. I, and okay. I did finally find the dream. And apparently, it, I noticed the time is 919. And that's okay, the time. 919. So it is basically um, the, the, the number, uh, the goddess is nine. You know, there's nine times nine names of, of Mary, 81. And, and, you know, they name all the names of the goddess and, and of Mary and, and they're in, in, in groups of nine, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, 919 means, um, you know, is, is the goddess and in the middle is, is, the, uh, is unity, you know. So you got the, the goddess brackets, uh, the one. The, that aspect of the of the divine wedding, where two become one, you know. So uh, you're and, and on both sides is is the number of the goddess. Okay. And uh, uh, so we're going to catch the bus at at nine one nine. I mean, right now I, I right now I feel a little lame, you know that that I'm I, I don't know what exactly. So. Um, now, uh, we did we miss the bus? No. Um, okay. I run over to where the other children are, and um, they're all, you know, getting on the bus. But you don't get on the bus? I did not yet. I was, you know, there's lines Looking forming. For and, yeah. yeah, and so you want to go home me. with your friend, mm -hmm. and uh, yet you don't think his parents will approve? And then um, at that point, some all-knowing faculty member at this place of learning taunts us and says, oh, is he cheating on you? Oh, is he cheating on you? Uh, says, apparently, oh, uh, I did say, I, I, when I, I said, oh, so what it reads here is, I want to go home with my unknown friend, but I don't know if his parents will let me come over or not. I say this out loud, and what seems to be a faculty member asks me if he's cheating on me. Um, I'm bothered by what she said and tell her, no, it's not like that. But she keeps loudly repeating the question to my annoyance. Okay, well, I mean, what she is saying is that, um, you know, uh, I, I think what she is, the way she says it in a mocking tone has to do with us not harmonizing with the music in the first place, you know, and the fact that we tripped over something. She is mocking us that um, uh, you gave up the chance to harmonize with this uh, female vocalist in this concert. And instead you choose to go home with uh, it's a male friend, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in shoot, this is preferable to singing with this uh, almost goddess-like uh, person to sing with her. You want to go home with this friend and, uh, uh, and he's missing and you don't know where he is. So she's sort of mocking us instead of, uh, I, I mean, I'm just saying, you, you, you know, the last time, this woman asked you, uh, are you interested in her? And you said, yes. And she says, well, you need a new suit of clothes. So I, I'm not exactly sure on that. Uh, Roy, what, what do you think? Yeah, what, what does that question mean to Charles? You know, what do you think the faculty woman was saying? Um. 
is he really your friend? Um, I don't know. I can't let other things come to me right now. But is um, she implying that you're she's that doubting you might be that gay. She's Some, doubting your that he's really a friend. You know, she's uh, denying your feelings towards your friend, like you think he's a friend, but she's doubting he's not. He's not really a friend. Something like that. Um, it's no, it's definitely not just that. I think Craig's getting onto something. It's implying um, that you're it, gay, it, that you or something, or, or the, but not the, or the not being that. able to sing. Now you done switched from not being able to sing to gay. I mean, which one are you talking about? It's two I, things, Craig. Well, I'm I'm just thinking that because we didn't sing with the anima she and went, instead went home with this male friend and we can't find him that there's an aspect that um and and it is a, a feminine figure uh i, I i'm not uh, insisting on this but i'm just get trying to guess the question the meaning of the question oh is she he cheating on you if he's cheating on you that means that you and him have some type of uh, amorous relationship and and he's meanwhile having an amorous relationship with someone else secretly uh yet i think that she's saying this in somewhat of a jest or m in a mocking tone because we miss the opportunity to unite with the uh this this singing anima uh roy go ahead i i didn't mean to interrupt is, you. is just... that correct charles it, did craig sum it up um yeah sorry i'm just kind of in uh in a epiphanal state um and i almost don't want to really go into it right now um but yeah let me jump um, in here a minute. I'm thinking about the, the, the friend as sort of a, a mirror image of you. And what I hear the, the authority figure saying is, is your devotion going to be with the feminine or the masculine? Um, there's some kind of uh, intimacy that I think is, is, is expected with the feminine, whether that's, whether that's out in the outer world or whether that's the anima. And it seems like the authority figure is saying, okay, where's, where's, your, uh, where's your energy gonna go? Yeah. What do you yeah, mean about I, your epiphanal state Is right now or? Yeah, yeah, right now. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it's a puer thing. Um, it's sort of, uh, um, I, it kind of clicked, um, like how, you know, in the Von Franz book, um, something, I, I don't know, um, dealing with uh, homosexuality in the shadow. Um, and I can't even really exactly formulate it right now, but it's basically like, can't connect to the anima because um, of uh, the like libido regression towards the mother and it can cause, um, uh, like it can cause homosexuality and I forget exactly how that ties into the shadow. Yeah, she said there, there's some aspect of that it can, it can, can because we don't want to leave. But Tim, could you repeat your question again? Because I don't know if well, you answered it. I'm trying it. to think of this in different ways, but uh, it seems really ripe for a, an act of imagination about these characters. Like what would it be like 
to have a conversation with the with the friend. What if uh, if it was him pointing the mic at you and saying, "Okay, now's your now's your chance to participate," instead of the woman on stage? What would that yeah. feel? And do you think you would be too shy to do that? Yeah, no, I mean, you're 100% on the money. Um, if it was all an all male cast, then I would have sang along. Uh, it wouldn't have been a problem. But um, I can't, um, um, I can't, I can't speak because I can't produce. Um, I can't create the sound, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it, yeah, like I said, it's quite epiphanal, but it's it's you know um, private information at the moment. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, um, go ahead. Well, uh, yeah, uh, uh, th this is a very important moment here. You might, if some time. When, you, when you're a child and you're back at your school, you're, you're visiting something in the past, your vulnerabilities open, maybe at some time uh, something happened when you, when you were trying to relate to the female and you were mocked. I mean, this might have happened sometime back and it traumatized you. You can't get too close to it because, of course, it's very disturbing. You know, there's no, nothing more painful is for me to be mocked by, uh, I'm just saying, by what I've had it happen, the feminine uh, to just humiliate you or, or you know, to mock you. It's, it's very painful to me. I mean, I, my, my problem was, uh, uh, you, you know, just um, the fact that I was so unrelated I, I encountered a lot of rejection and uh, it was very painful for me. But let's hear what Gary and Shu have to say and then let's uh, give Charles a, a, a couple of days to recover and we'll go, uh, we'll go after it again. What, what do you think, Gary? Well, so, you know, he has this opportunity. It doesn't work. He falls over this small barrier on the ground. I think that's interesting because it's a... It's an earth barrier. It's, some, it's something to do with being connected to the earth. And then, you know, there's, there's this friend, but the friend is unknown. He's unknown because, you know, maybe it feels like a friend, but he doesn't really know what to expect. And he doesn't know what the family of the friend you know, how, what the acceptance will be. And yet what's, you know, what I find interesting about this is that the friend shows up right after the failure to, you know, kind of to, you know, express and connect with the, uh, you know, with the lyrical. And so, you know, it, it, it's like the, you know, the, the dream maker or the psyche is coming up and saying, look, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's some help here. Maybe this is the way to kind of deal with what just happened. And yet then we have the shadow that says, well, wait, you don't know this friend. Can you trust it? You know, you know, is the friend, is the friend going to cheat on you? Is the are you, do you think the friend's going to help you? And then the friend doesn't. So I, I guess I'm reading it a little bit different. And, and the fact that we're gonna go home with the friend and we're worried about the parents um, thinking that this is an improper relationship. Do you, do you think there's an aspect of that, Charles, or not? Um, I don't know that particular detail did not occur to me. Um, that, that why would the parents object? Mm. I don't know. Um, well, we'll leave that for Wednesday. Let's yeah. Think yeah. about it. Uh, Shu, do you have any uh, comments? Um, 
Yes, I mean, I, I don't have any um, like straight answers, but I, I, yeah, there's a lot going on in my head about it too. But I just wanted to firstly ask, um, what's your relationship with the heavy metal music? Like, is it the, the type of music that you like or, like, how do you feel about that genre? Uh, it's actually the type of music I grew up with as a kid. Right, okay. So, Because I feel like that style of music kind of sets the tone for the dream in a way. It's kind of setting the scene. So it's something that you're familiar with that, you know, maybe a sense of security, it's familiar territory. Uh, and I'm just wondering whether, um, to me, it seems like there's a lot of sabotage happening in the dream, like whether it's self-sabotage or other people, you know, doing the sabotaging. And I'm wondering whether this person that you're, uh, that's cheating, you know, that's being accused of cheating on you is, possibly a reflection on another part of yourself like um you know that you're cheating on in some way does that make sense um I, I just that that was one thought that sort of came to my head that there's this kind of um you know like you, you were offered you were given the opportunity for one to sing and you didn't take that opportunity. Um, and I guess that's in some way a form of, um, you know, not, not doing the right thing by yourself, you know, in a, in a sense. Um, and the 919 thing also was interesting to me. And I was thinking if you add up all the numbers, that's 19 19 years old if you can the, uh, that's a significant year astrologically of the nodal return and often a, a series of fated events happen every 19 years that kind of pull you back onto you know your dharma so I'm wondering whether it, that that has a connection to your 19th year as well so that's just you know some random thoughts that I had about the dream 1938 and 57 and then 60, yeah. 67 and 76. Yeah. yeah. And, and in fact, every half nodal opposition, which is half of that, every eight and a half years, um, has a connection to every 19 years. So it's, you know, so eight and a half, then 19 years. So those are the years possibly to reflect on whether they may be, have formulating patterns, you know, around the content of this dream that that might still that you might be reflecting on. Yeah. Well, well I'm well, thinking, of, I'm thinking of a real similar thing to what you said that uh, some that perhaps sometime in your past, like maybe around eight and a half or nine years old, you had some kind of opportunity to make a choice maybe between a, a boy and a girl or a friendship that went one way or another. And, and there was some kind of challenge from the authorities saying, you're not doing the right thing or you don't know if you're gonna be accepted at your friend's house or something like that. I just wonder if you can go back and you know, journal about memories you have of that kind of situation, because that could be a place where there was a um, a change of course in your life that is probably unconscious, but might have consequences right now that, you know, you made some decision early on to do one thing rather than another, and your heart is saying, well, uh, you know, you've um, maybe that wasn't the right choice, or maybe it's time to change course, or something like that. Yeah. Or and to add to that, even at the eight and a half year old, perhaps it was something to do with your parents or the mother. Uh, I, from what I understand, there was the mother in the dream as well. Um, 
maybe something may have happened at that age for you that have set up kind of psychological patterns um, that may be connected to this dream. Do, do you have any concluding thoughts on it, Charles? And well, I, I want to review Roy's dream, the concert dream uh, by Tim and uh, Charles dream Wednesday, but do you have any concluding thoughts, Charles? And then maybe we can just introduce Tim's dream. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't think I've ever uh, had such an uh, epiphany from uh, looking at a dream before. Um, and it's funny because I've been almost bringing this dream for a long time. And it's just been kind of like nagging me. And I didn't really know why this dream in particular, but um, yeah, it's, it's, this is all, this whole dream is about not being able to connect to the anima, uh, and, uh, the shadow and homosexuality. It's, that is ex what this dream is about. That, that's all I'll say. Well, let's, let's cons reconsider it. Cause I want to reconsider all these, but Tim, do you, do you want to just at least, uh, introduce your dream? Uh, of the new one or the concert? No, let's do the new one and we'll do the both of them next time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, sure. We'll see if I can paste it in here. Okay. Yeah, you did that last time. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't, just email it to me. There you go. Or oh, No Help Hospital. There you go. Yeah. So I'm in a. I like this one. I'm in a hospital ward doing something parallel to nursing, perhaps. But I notice that the patients are being neglected. So I begin to go to other departments trying to find help and back to the patients to monitor what's going on. So at one point, I'm talking to a patient who's actually a healthcare worker, and I ask her if it would be helpful to take her temperature, and she says yes. I go to the nurse's station, but nobody is available. So I go to another department, and there I ask for help, and someone says, do you mean out of nine people, there's no one to help? Talking about the first nurse's station. And my reply is, nine people? I didn't see but two or three. So I go back to look again and maybe raise a fuss. Okay, let, let, let's go. Over, I'll go over it real quick. And then we'll see what, if we got a few comments. So you're in a hospital doing, we're, we're, we're doing something parallel to nursing but you notice the, uh, that there's patients being neglected. So you're in a hospital where um, healing is not occurring. So there, there, there's people there that need healing and they're being neglected. So we begin to go to other departments to find help uh, uh, and, and back to the patients to monitor what's going on. So why are we in a hospital where um, the, the ones who need, who are wounded, who have a, a uh, healing issue. Uh, this is a profound dream. It really is a profound dream. Uh, that, that no one is being helped here. I mean, it's just absolutely, uh, uh, almost has a divine aspect to it. And, and at one point we go talking to a patient who's actually a healthcare worker. We ask her if it would be helpful to get her temperature? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And she says, yes. You're talking to a patient who's actually a health care worker. So she's a patient. I go to the nurse's station, but nobody is available. This is Kafka. This is like trot the trial or, uh, or the castle. I go to the nurse's stations, but nobody's available. So I go to another department and there I ask for help and someone says, do you mean out of nine people? Okay, there, that number is coming up again. It's, a, it's the feminine number of the goddess. Do you mean in the realm of the goddess, there's no one to help? You look up the number nine and just see how it's related to the goddess. And my reply is nine people? I don't see uh, but two or three. Okay, so we're, you know, you know, this, this, not only is there's no help there, but, but the, uh, 
the now also we got nine muses, you know, and nine names for the goddess. And uh, I don't see the e ego is is not able to see all this the nine muses or the nine nurses or the nine goddesses, nine names of the goddess. So we go back to uh, to look again and maybe raise a fuss. Now this this is a dream where ego is uh, has great frustration. Um, it's beautiful. What do you think, Roy? Is this literal or a dream? If you go to the hospital, it sounds like you went to the hospital. No, it's a dream. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been I've been in a hospital like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's like real life. You know, I, I I don't know. It just sounds more like life than a dream. Well, well yeah, what's it's very very frustrating to me because I'm in oh yeah I'm in uh, somebody else's world. And I wasn't just a visitor, I was doing some kind of project or something, but it's it's not my responsibility. And all of a sudden I feel like, well, geez, nobody's doing anything. No one is healing in the place of healing and the uh, and the feminine is missing. You know, the, the nine uh, is missing. And uh, so, and nothing is happening here. So the, the healing that needs to take place in us is not going on. And the idea is there's no one here to heal. Now, you, typically that means the ego can't help you. Now you need some kind of animal helpers or something. What do you think, Gary? Well, you know, this kind of reminds me like when you're, you know, you're doing like some sort of spiritual exercise and you're trying to feel it inside. And, but, you know, for whatever reason, you, you fail to make that connection. And so then you're just kind of like, you know, you're just wandering and you feel lost. And that's, that's how it, it feels to me. You know, like there's supposed to be things there and yet you can't call on them. It's sort of like a desert, uh, you, you, you know, it's just, there's, there's an aspect of that, um, that, that uh, it is, uh, uh, there's no life there. Uh, you know, the, the, we need life in the healing realm. What do you think, Shu? Are you there, Shu? Sorry, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, not too sure about this one, but um, possibly interesting that, um, yeah, they said about the nine nurses here, and you could only see two or three. So it's something about um, maybe not being able to see something or, um, yeah, something along those lines. Um, but yeah, I don't have too much more to add on this one. Well, yeah, so, we'll, and we'll... maybe seeing the fairness or the, the righteousness of the whole issue. You know, you're seeing this is not right. You know, and you're calling it out in a way, and you have don't know what to do about it, or you know, you know, there's something's up, that something's wrong, um, something's not right. It's yeah. an incredibly important dream, I think, uh, Tim, and I, I want to. I'm anxious to go, and I think we can link it in with the concert dream. Uh, Charles, you you have the last word, and I just want to say, Dawn and Shu, please, if next time you're here, see, see if you can. Come up with a dream because I would. I, I just think we need you, you, your dreams. Uh, go ahead, Charles. Do you have any final comments? Um, I just think it's really interesting that one of the patients is a medical worker because to me that means that like, uh, it, well, it's an image of a healer that needs healing. So there's another yeah, that's all there's another uh, aspect of this hospital, you know. It, it does sort of remind me of this husband's insane asylum. I don't know. You know, there's this, this aspect that it's uh, it, it is missing the the vibrancy of the feminine. It's just all cavernous hallways of of ego or something. Uh, anyone else got any final comments? And then we'll come back to both of these. Dreams and the concert dream on Wednesday. And uh, of course, hopefully uh, somebody brings some other dreams. Anybody? 
You got anything? Okay, well, Tim, this is a beautiful, beautiful dream. So we'll, and Charles, your dream, uh, hopefully you've recovered from your epiphany by next Wednesday. So anyway, well, thank you, Shu and Dawn. It's all, I love, love it when you can drop by. And yeah. uh, yes, and we'll, uh, we'll, well, next time, anytime you guys can come is, is wonderful. So, so thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time. All right, thanks. Bye, 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 guys. See you. Yeah. See you later.